Andy, did you hear that? Come on, will you? Did I hear what? That whistle. That's the Rinso White whistle. And Rinso means us. That's right. Rinso gets clothes Rinso White, and Rinso presents the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> For a wash that's Rinso White. Rinso for a wash that's Rinso White. Rinso in your tub or washer makes for a happier, easier wash day. As little as a five minute run per load in your washing machine gives you a wash to be proud of. No wonder Rinso is recommended by the makers of 33 leading washers, among them your own Speed Queen. Take good care of that precious Speed Queen. Remember, washing machine manufacturers are still making vital war materials. And ladies, next wash day, remember... Rinse of white. Rinse of white. Happy little wash day song. And now our stars, Amos and Andy. When a man has a birthday, he likes to be remembered by his friends. Well, Andy Brown is no different. That's why he's pretty much down in the dumps at the moment, because today is his birthday, and he hasn't received as much as a birthday card. He's in his office complaining bitterly about the situation to Amos and the Kingfish. Well, it seems to me that when a man has got a birthday, he can least expect two of his closest friends to remember him with a little gift or something. Yeah, well, Andy, like I told you, I've been so busy selling bonds on this seventh wall loan, I just ain't had no time. Nah. And as far as I was concerned, Andy, I don't know how I happened to forget to buy you a present. I can't imagine. Oh, I done had it marked on my calendar in big letters. May the 18th, buy Andy Brown a birthday present. Yeah, well, if you had it in big letters, how could you miss seeing it? It wasn't easy. I mean, uh... Yeah, I know. <laughs> what you mean is the whole thing wasn't reporting enough. Oh, look, Andy, we as your friends and as... Getting... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Here come Lightning. Maybe he didn't forget it. Come in, Lightning. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Miss Andy, I just dropped in to give you something. Oh, Lightning, I know that you wouldn't forget what is it? There's a letter for you. Hey, come over to the lodge. Hmm, a letter. I thought you meant something else. Lightning, don't you know what today is? May the 18th? Uh, May the 18th? Yeah. Uh, no, sir, I don't think so. Though if the day was the 25th and it was later in the year, it could be Christmas. <laughs> Lightning, give me that letter and get on out of here. Yeah, wait a minute. I'll walk with you, Lightning. I'll see you fellas later. So long. So long. So long, boy. Say, and uh, that letter looked like it's from overseas. Yeah, you're right. It's from my nephew Jimmy, overseas. Well. Yeah, he didn't forget his old Uncle Andy's birthday. Oh, that was good. Let me see what it say here. Mm -hmm. Say, dear Uncle Andy, I wanted to send you a gift for your birthday, but it's awfully hard to find a store of any kind in the area where I've been stationed. Hmm. However, yesterday, I found something unusual, and I'm sending it to you under separate cover. I got it while we were overrunning a small German town. It's a case of German bullion. Bullion? Bullion? And uh, that's gold. Gold? <laughs> You mean he sent me a case of gold? That's right, Andy. Look here, gold. Andy, don't you remember reading in the paper about a month ago about the Allied soldiers capturing a whole pile of gold bullion that the Germans had hid down in some big salt mine in Germany? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. Well, it looks like the boy done got a hold of a case of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Jimmy's been right around in that section, too. I know that. Uh, tell me, Kingfish, uh... What kind of gold is that bullion stuff? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's just gold that come in the form of a bar. You know, uh, you've seen them iron bars. They call them Ignatzes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, this is the greatest thing that ever done happened to me. I'm so excited, I don't know what to do. Brother Anna, sit down. Yeah. You know, I bet you thought all along that I done forgot to get you something for your birthday. Well, I've just been kidding you. <laughs> yeah, you see this necktie I wear in here, Andrew? 
Does not that sound right here? Well, I got it for you. Let me take it off here and give it to you. There you are, Dander. Take it and many happy returns of the... Oh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andy. Oh, happy... stop it, stop it, Kingfish. I know just what you're doing this for. You never bought this necktie for my birthday. Look there, it's got gravy stains all over Oh, Andy, what you talking about? Oh, that ain't gravy. That's woven right into the material there. Look at that. Yeah, well, then whoever wove it had his hands full of gravy. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, I as wise to you. You trying your best to get on the right side of me and muscle in on that gold. Now, wait a minute. Now, speaking about the gold, Andy, all I want you to do is to protect yourself, and I want to help protect you, too. Huh? Now, you know there's a law saying that one person can only own so much bullion. There is? Oh, yeah, this bullion here, there's a law against it. Senator, and the only way that you can get around it is to give the gold you got left over to a close friend. Now, here, Brother Andy... Let me take the lint off your coat collar there. Hold still there. Pick that off there. Hey, here's some on your sleeve there. Get that off there. Huh? Kingfish, you ain't going to get no part of that case of gold. So you can put that lint right back on my suit. Oh, Andy, look here. Don't, don't take my word about the gold. Lord, let's go over to see Gabby, the lawyer, about it. Yeah, I want to see him anyway, because I got to find out what to do with the gold when I get it. Yeah, uh, see, here come Henry Van Porter. Now, don't let's waste no time on him. Well, hello, boys. Hello. Charming to see you. Yeah, we just leaving, Henry, in a big hurry. Well, I seem to have come in at a very inopportunity moment. What's up, boys? Well, uh, we got to go, Henry. Uh, read that letter on the desk there, and that'll tell you the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, come on. So long, Henry. Goodbye. Hmm. Let me look at this letter and see what it's all about here. I'm sending you a very big a case, a case of German... A case of German bullion... Oh, there's a P.S. on the back here. P.S. In case you've never used this before, you simply let one bullion cube dissolve in a cup of <laughs> boiling water, and in a few minutes, you've got a cup of delicious soup. Hmm. I wonder why Andy and the Kingfish is so excited over a case of soup. <laughs> Come right in, boys. Come right on in. Yeah, well, hello there, Gabby. As our lawyer, we got to see you about a case right away. I'm just going out to lunch. Just going out to lunch. But I'll go tomorrow instead. Mm, yeah. Uh, we got some important stuff to request with you, Gabby. Uh, my nephew in Europe has sent me a case of solid gold bullion. A case of solid gold? Boys, that's one case I'd sure love to handle. Yeah. Well, the thing I want to know, Gabby, is how I'm going to change the gold bullion into spending money here. I got to get a change in the nickels and dimes and quarters and half dollars. That's right. That's absolutely right. You got to get some silver threads among the gold. <laughs> the only way you can do that, Andy, is through a banker. Now, I can give you the name of a big banker here in Harlem, Mr. Homer P. Johnson. You're going to see him, Andy. But I warned you, if he reaches for the button on this desk, get out fast. Get out fast. Yeah, hear that? Yeah, well, if there's a chance of getting in trouble, I think I'll send lightning over as a go-between to see him first. Yes, there's definitely a chance for trouble. From the legal standpoint, you was allowed to run up against the law of internal combustion. The law of internal combustion. The law of internal combustion. Mm -hmm. How you figure that? Well, if it finds out you just broke the law, the internal revenue man will come busting in here. That's the law of internal combustion, Bob. <laughs> now let's listen to the Mystic Knights of the Sea Quartet singing Sentimental Journey. Gonna take a sentimental journey Gonna set my heart at ease Gonna make a sentimental journey To renew old memories Got my bag, I got my reservation Spend each time I could afford Like a child Anticipation, long to hear that all aboard. Seven, that's the time we leave at seven. I'll be waiting up for heaven, counting every mile of railroad track that takes me back. Never thought my heart would be so yearning. 
why did I decide to go? Gotta take the sentimental journey, sentimental journey home, journey home, journey home. <laughs> my good man, I was told you wanted to see me personally about a confidential matter. Uh, what is it in regard to, a loan of some sort? I know, sir, Mr. Johnson, uh, my name is Lightning, and a couple of friends of mine told me to ask you if you would like to buy a case of German bullion that they just uh, got there, just arrived here. A case of German bullion? Imported bullion? Why, oh, I'd love to. My, my, I hadn't supposed that my reputation for being a gourmet had become so well known. I asked, uh, well, we know that you was, uh, uh, what you say that you were, we know that. <laughs> ah, imported bouillon. I haven't tasted any for almost three years. It's so difficult to get. Ah, uh, yeah, sir. I guess they figure that you was the man who would want this stuff. Well, I'll say I am. Well, uh, tell your friends I'll pay as much as $15 for their bullion. Uh, if they'll just see me here at the bank at, uh, 3 o'clock. Ah, uh, yeah, sir. I'll whiz right over and tell you. <laughs> So Homer P. Johnson was really interested in buying our German bullion, uh, huh, Lightning? Oh, yeah, sir. He said he ain't never tasted none for almost three years. Uh, tasted none? What you talking about, tasted, uh... What do you suppose he meant by that, Kingfish? Well, uh, you was done see the teller in the bank uh, chew on a coin to see whether it's real stuff or just a lead slug, ain't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah well, they uses the same method but gold, you see. Yeah, huh? Oh, yeah, biting on the stuff, that, that's the test for real gold. All bankers uses that method. They do, huh? Oh, yeah. In fact, that's why most bankers got false teeth. They usually wear out their own set biting into the first million, you see. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Johnson also said that if you see him at the bank at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, he'll give you as much as $15 for the bullion. $15? That ain't uh, much money for a case of gold, is it? Uh, certainly ain't. Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute, Andy. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, listen, I, I, I know why. What? You, you, you know what it is? No, what? Gold is figured by the ounce. Oh, yeah. This means uh, that he's willing to pay us fifteen dollars an ounce. Hmm. In other words, the more that go away, the more it's going to be worth. Oh yeah. Well, uh, thanks for doing the air enlightening. So run along, will you? Yeah. Uh, me and Andy got some thinking to do on this gold stuff here. Yeah, I'll say. Drop back in a day or two, Lightning, and we'll give you an ounce. Ah uh, yeah, sir. So long, gentlemen. So long, so long. Now, Andy, uh, give me a pencil and piece of paper here. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Now uh, let's try to get a rough idea of how much money we're going to make. Now, first of all, even a small case of gold ought not to weigh less than uh, 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, figuring on that basin, uh, there's a... Uh, uh, say, by the way, uh, how many ounces is there in a the pound again? I uh, think that slipped my mind. Yeah, how many ounces in the pound? Well, I know it used to be 40. <laughs> uh, and uh, with inflation and everything today, though, the pound is probably up to 68 ounces. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Maybe even more than that. Yeah. yeah. So figuring there are 68 ounces to the wartime pound, we multiply that times the 50 pounds we expect the bullion to be. Yeah, you do, huh? Yeah, now, that ought to give us the exact amount of ounces. Right. Now, let's see. I put down uh, 50 times 68. I put down the 68 here. Then I put a 50 under it. Yeah. Then I draw my line here. Mm -hmm. And then I start multiplying here. Now, watch this. Yeah. First, we take the zero times 68. Zero times 68 is zero. You sure about that? Yeah. Sure, huh? Mm. Yeah, well, so far, we ain't making much, is we? <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry about the zero, though. 
it ain't no use to worry about that zero and a right now. That zero is just dangling there. Oh. Well, that's just dangling. Don't mean much. Mm -hmm. But later on, it gets added in the form of a digit. Digit. Is that good? Oh, of course it's good. It's the digits where the big money comes from. Oh, yeah, you show me a millionaire and I'll show you a man that's loaded up on digits. Yeah, well, uh... Go ahead with the thing, Kingfish. I'll hang on to that dangling zero till you get ready to use it for a digit. Yeah, well, now, uh, then we take five times 68. Oh, yeah. Five times eight is, uh, 40. That's right. Five times six is 30. Now we add 30 and 40 together there. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead, add it up. Let me get them there. There's a 30 and I put the 40 under it. Now I saw it adding here. Mm-hmm. Zero plus zero is zero. Uh, now, there's another dangling zero. You want me to hang on to that for another digit? No, oh, flip it to me, son. Flip it to me. We're really going to start hitting digit country here now. Look here. Let me see here. Let me see. There's a so and so. There's 15. There's seven to put another order. For. It comes to $10,500. Now, that's a rough estimate of what our bullion is worth. Oh, boy, I sure going to be able to buy a lot of war bonds with that. You know I'll have to oversubscribe the seventh war loan all by myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we really in the biggest... Oh, no, boy, no, allow me to congratulate you. Allow me to. I just heard how you came out from Lightning. Just hear about it. Yeah, and get a load of how much the gold going to amount to. $10,500. Of course, the whole trouble with getting them out of money that big is the taxes you got to pay on it. Yes, indeed, the taxes. Oh, uh, listen, Gabby, uh, you really think there'll be a lot of tax to pay on that amount? Oh, yes, indeed. When you get some $10,000, they can bracket you to death. Yeah. Well, uh, wait a minute. There's somebody coming. Oh, hello, Shorty. Uh, hi, hi, you fellas. I w uh oh. Goodbye. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Shorty. You just got here. What you leaving for? I got great news to tell you. Oh, it, it, it's that Gabby there. Every, every time I see him, I, I, I get into an argument with, with, with him about something. Not again, Shorty. I ain't going to start talking. It's you to start talking. It's you, and you know it. There, you see, there it goes again. Uh, what, what's the great news you got to tell me, Andy? Well, my nephew overseas has sent me a case of gold bullion that the Allied soldiers found in a salt mine in Germany. Mm. And we figure we can unload it at the bank for 10500 yeah, Shorty, me and Andy are really going to be in the money when we sell that gold. Yes, sir. Oh, my goodness, you, you, you can't go a dumping a lot of gold on the market just like that. You, 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 you dump all that gold and you're going to start inflation, that's what. Inflation, and, and that's a nasty word. What, <laughs> what, what the hell are you talking about, Shorty? And in Kingfish selling gold ain't got nothing to do with inflation. You're talking about something you don't know nothing about. You don't know a thing about inflation. Uh, who don't? You don't. Oh, yes, I do. It's, 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 it's what? It's what? Well, it's what when you get... It's what? Hmm? <laughs> well, it's what? Well, it's what when you get... You're wrong. Now, you see that? You see that? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Inflation? You know what inflation is? What is inflation that? is the theoretical of the borax, whereby the situation is only complicated by the resistance of the substance. Mm -hmm. And we need it. We got to have it. Oh, man, what are you talking about? What, 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 what we need, what, what we really need is... Is, is what? Is what? What do we need? Well, it's an is, 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 uh, obligatory of the non-home existence, which uh, now predominates. <laughs> Why, 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 that alone would, 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 would put it, would, uh, you, you can't, when you get, uh, that is right there. <laughs> Shorty, is you gone plumb crazy? That don't prove nothing. That don't prove a thing. Oh, yes, it does. Oh, yes, it does. That's uh, it, it goes to prove that the... That the to prove what? To prove what? Why? That the... That the, 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 the That's a lie. <laughs> they could never prevent inflation that way. It takes a two-third vote to invalidate a treaty. And that would inflate the Townsend plan, creating a social security of the immigration of the... Dumbart no. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, but has, hasn't we got the post-mortem of the Financial Confederation uh, deducted from the reforestation of, of the, of the, of the, hasn't we? Well, I... We have not! <laughs> and you, uh, you, you, you talk about Dumbart and Oaks. What, what, what about uh, uh, Bretton Woods and Nutty Pine? <laughs> That, Shorty? The kingfish didn't tell you that. How about that kingfish? Well, Gabby, I feel that. Now, you're short. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> oh, yeah, but.
Well, but, but, but why couldn't he do it? Ask me that. Well, why couldn't he do it? Because under the present OPA system of financial homicide, it would curb the immigration of post-war commodities, causing high prices in the low countries and low prices in the high countries. And what's the reason? What's the reason? Well, anybody knows the answer to that. A Andy, go on and tell him the answer. Go on, Andy. Tell him the answer. Go on. Well, fellas, in my opinion... That's the wrong answer. <laughs> Now, 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 hold it just a minute, fellas. Uh, me and Anna uh, just want to tell you that we done learned a great lesson here. Yeah, oh, that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah that's... what you learn? What you learn? Well, we done learned that when our goal arrives, we don't want either one of you to open your big mouth. If you were eight years old and you could swim and dive and do ballet dancing, your mother would be proud of you, too, like Karen Sandwall's mother is. You've seen Karen in the Rinso ads, and her mother has written us a letter that says Karen has another very important accomplishment. Mrs. Sandwall wrote us, On wash day, Karen joins me whistling the Rinso white whistle. Karen knows that Rinso whistle well, because she knows you just can't beat Rinso white and Rinso bright. You'll agree with that, ladies, once you try Rinso. You'll like it not only because it gives top results, but because Rinso saves you time and work, too. I'll bet you'll soon be joining this wash day chorus. Rinso white for a wash that's white as it can be. Rinso bright. B-R-I-G-H-T. Yes, Rinso keeps your colors bright. Get out more dirt for a wash so white. Here's great advice. You can't go wrong. Rinso white. Rinso White, happy little wash day song. Remember, a Rinso White wash with ease. A Rinso Bright wash with safety. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, sir. We are here to see the president of the bank, Mr. Homer P. Johnson. I, Mr. Stevens, this is Mr. Brown. Have you cards? Well, just old pinochle deck. <laughs> uh, we are uh, we are here to see about the bullion, Mr. Johnson. Wants. Oh yes, yeah. step right this way, please. Well, how do you do, gentlemen? Yeah, how do you do, Mr. John? I'm Mr. Stevens, and this is my partner, Mr. Brown. Fine, fine. Uh, you came in regard to the bouillon. Yeah. Well, sit down and make yourself comfortable. Here, have a cigar. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, new father, huh? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, uh... <clears throat> Shall we get on to the business at hand, gentlemen? Uh, yeah, the, uh, Miss Johnson, uh, we just never like to hurry people when they're buying bullion. Oh, do you sell a lot of bullion? Does we? Why, we is known for our line of bullion. Well, gentlemen... <laughs> well, gentlemen, as I told your friend, I'll pay you $15 for the case of bullion. For the case? Well, I was figuring on $15 an ounce. $15 an ounce for bouillon? Yeah, that must be about ceiling price. Why, I never heard of such a thing. <laughs> $15 an ounce. Yeah, well, don't forget the expense, Mr. Johnson. This bouillon came all the way from Europe. Well, at that price, it must have had its own stateroom. I don't mind paying a lot for bouillon, but that whole case isn't worth more than $15. $15 for a case of bouillon? No wonder Fort Knox, the government, is burning the stuff. <laughs> Gentlemen, I don't know why we're having all this arguing over a case of bouillon. Yeah, but it's the real, genuine imported bouillon. But at $15 an ounce, why, I can get a can of chicken noodle for 15 cents. Chicken noodle? I don't see the disconnection there. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Johnson, but you're late for your board of directors meeting. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's, uh, that's right. Well, uh, you gentlemen bring the case of bouillon with you tomorrow, and uh, we'll make some kind of arrangements then. Uh, okay, Mr. Johnson. Come on, Andrew, let's go to the office. Maybe we'll have to shoot some bouillon to our South American brand. <laughs> That Mr. Johnson sure didn't like that uh, $15 price, did he? Nah, he don't seem to realize that gold is expensive stuff. Well, come on, let's go in my office here. Yeah. 
Say, look at that, Andy. Look at that on the floor. There's the case of bullion. Boy, I'm glad it got you. Yeah, that's it, all right. Wait a minute. I'll get the hammer and screwdriver off the shelf. Yeah, a whole case of gold. I can hardly wait to see it. Start hammering on it, son. Yeah, now be careful with the hammer there, Andy. Yeah. I'll put this paper on the floor here and catch the gold dust. Well, what you gonna bother with the gold dust for? Oh, when company comes, we can spread the gold dust around on the furniture. Add a little class to the joints, you know. Uh, ah, there it is, Kingfish. Yeah. They're gold bullion. Look, it's little cubes. Yeah. I ain't never seen such small Ignatzes before. Well, what's wrong with that? Each one wrapped in silver paper, yeah. Let me grab a couple of these here. Say, it is awful late. Kingfish, put that stuff down. Don't mess with my gold. Get away from there. And another thing, this is the first gold I ever seen where you could make a dent in it with your thumb. Look here. Look at the squash there. Uh, well, it's the squashy kind of gold. <laughs> Leave it alone, will you? If I want my gold squashed up, I'll do it myself. And uh, look at the color of it there. That's a funny color already, ain't it? Well, what a gold color usually look like. Well, let me show you my watch here. Uh, uh oh, uh, tell you what, you go down to the pawn shop. Honest Joe will show it to you down there. Yeah. Say, wait a minute, Andrew. Let me taste the stuff like the bankers do. Maybe that'll prove something. Well? And, uh, this don't taste like gold. It tastes like soup. Soup? And, uh, I just remembered something. Brace yourself, son. There are two kinds of bullion. One is gold and the other is soup. This ain't gold, Andy. What you got there is soup. Kingfish, you fooled me. No, Andy, that's the truth. Oh, me. And I thought this was going to be a good birthday after all. Well, it's just like everything else with me, Kingfish. Nothing ever works out right. Oh, I feel the same way, Andy. Oh, you know. Kingfish. Kingfish, I just thought of something. What's wrong, Andy? Kingfish, we got a job to do right now. We got to stop thinking about ourselves. Andy, what are you talking about? It's our patriotic duty. We has got to send a cablegram this minute to General Eisenhower and the Supreme High Command. For what, Andy? Tell them that instead of gold in that salt mine, they has got a hundred billion dollars worth of soup ignatzes. <laughs> Things didn't work out so well for your friends today. No, sir, Mr. Wilcox, and in the Kingfish, we're disappointed today. But I can assure you listeners that you won't be disappointed if you'll take the advice of Hollow Wilcox here. No, ladies, you certainly won't be disappointed if you try Rinso for dishwashing. The easiest way I know of to get your dishes sparkling is with Rinso. And Rinso's just as big a help when it comes to clothes washing. Why, those soapy rich Rinso suds get out stubborn dirt fast. Give you a white wash that's Rinso white. Washable colors come Rinso bright. And ladies, Rinso is anti sneeze too. So for a happier, easier wash day and plenty of help with your house cleaning and dishes, get Rinso. That sure sounds like doing things the easy way. Yeah, Rinso makes you work easy, all right, ladies. Try it tomorrow. And now, good night. Good night, folks. <laughs> Be sure to be with us next Friday evening at this same time when the makers of Rinso will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Andy has been broke so lately that he's had trouble getting a date. Next week he gets a bright idea from a sailor friend and tries Navy tactics with rather disastrous results. Don't miss the fun. The Amos and Andy Show is broadcast to our fighting men all over the world.